Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Do you need to make a precise hair selection for a cutout or adjustment? Are traditional methods not working for you? In this video, I'll be showing you an alternative method to do just that, which uses two of Affinity Photo's most powerful and fun tools to use, the Compound Mask Layer and the Live Luminosity Range Mask. So let's get right into it. First, why use these tools at all? Isn't the Refine tool good enough for making hair selections? Yes, that's true. But as you can see here, for certain cases, the Refine tool might fail or lack precision. In such cases, it's good to have a backup or alternative that, who knows, might give better results. Before we begin the demonstration, let's do a quick review of the tools to be used. The first tool we are going to be using is the Compound Mask Layer or Compound Mask. It lets you combine multiple mask layers non-destructively using Boolean operations like add, subtract, etc. and then edit each component mask independent of each other. The most common and default operator is the add operator. Here is an example of a compound mask. As you can see here, the final mask is a result of adding the pixels of the three separate masks grouped together under a single compound mask layer. By the way, for more information on this, do check out my compound mask video if you have not done so. The next tool we're going to be using is the Live Luminosity Range Mask. This tool creates a mask based on an image's luminosity values. It uses a graph to specify the mask, and it can be used to isolate shadows, midtones, or highlights by manipulating a curve. It can also be used to blend bracketed images together, offering greater control than performing an automatic HDR merge. But for our purposes, we will be using the luminosity range mask to perform precise hair selections for cutouts. So now that we have an overview of the tools, let's demonstrate its usage by making a precise cutout of this portrait with fairly complicated hair. To start off, I just have two layers, the portrait image itself and the background image to verify the quality of our cutout. The first step is to create the compound mask. Right click on the mask layer button, choose compound mask. Drag the compound mask inside the portrait image. Next, let's add a luminosity range mask. Right click on the mask layer button, choose luminosity range mask. Note that the luminosity range mask is a sublayer of the compound mask in this case. If for whatever reason it is not so, make sure to drag the luminosity range mask inside the compound mask. Next, let's mask the portrait image using the live luminosity range mask. Note that the live luminosity range mask's dialog is already opened. If for whatever reason it is not visible, you can double click on its thumbnail to show it. To begin masking, I'll first select Preview. Next, I'll manipulate the graph in such a way that the hair will be white while the background black. Note that special priority will be given to the hair's edges as this is the most difficult part to mask and the primary reason why we are using the luminosity range mask in the first place. Any other missed areas can be easily fixed anyway by conventional masking tools, as we will see later. There, the mask is looking good. Let's view the result. I'll click on the portrait images layer. There, the cutout is looking very promising, but it clearly is incomplete. While the difficult hair is accurately selected and the background has become transparent, other parts look semi-transparent, evidence that the mask needs to be further refined. So how do we improve the mask? We improve the mask by augmenting our luminosity range mask with a secondary mask. Let's do that right now. Right click on the mask layer, click Empty Mask. 
ensure that the empty mask is inside the compound mask and above the luminosity range mask. With the empty mask selected, paint white on the semi-transparent areas. As you can see, a better result. Essentially, what we're doing is adding the two masks together via an add operator, and that results in a more complete mask. Let's unhide the background to view the result. And there you have it, a perfect cutout. Do note that since we are relying on luminosity values to mask the hair, this technique works best if there is some contrast between the hair and the background. In this case, the hair was darker than the background, making it suitable for this methodology. Do note that this technique also works in reverse, if the hair is lighter than the background. Let's demonstrate with this image. Once again, I'll create the compound mask. Then I'll create the luminosity range mask. Once again, I'll manipulate the graph to ensure as much as possible the difficult hair edges are in white, while the background is in black. There, the masking is done, but once again, it is incomplete. Let's augment the luminosity range mask with a secondary mask. Create an empty mask. Once again, I'll use this mask to fill in the missing areas. To ensure accuracy and avoid spillovers, I'll use a selection brush to make a selection. I'll first hide the compound mask. There, the selection is done. However, there are still some errors. I'll use the polygonal selection tool to fix it. Okay, the selection is looking good. With the empty mask layer selected, I'll paint white on the missed areas. Notice that the deficiencies of the previous mask are now being rectified by the secondary mask. So there you have it, another perfect hair cutout with just the compound mask and luminosity range mask. As you can see, this technique is fairly flexible and works as long as there is a tonal difference between the hair and the background. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any other uses of the compound mask and luminosity range mask or any other techniques for selecting hair. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.